Right, welcome back. <clears throat> oh, I'm very annoyed at the moment. Very annoyed with Westpac. I need to vent. So I've had an evaded lease. So I don't know. Basically in Australia you can you can lease your car and it's taking out pre-tax and all this sort of shit. And then at the end you've got your balloon payment. So I started that with Westpac. That loan application, 24th of July. And um, the lease was expiring in October. And backwards and forwards, backwards and forwards. And basically they said they need a letter from St. George, which is where the lease was, stating what the payout figure is. So I went to St. George, but St. George couldn't give me a letter stating what the payout figure was because there was still one lease payment to go. And their computers apparently can't look into the future. So the only letter I could get from St. George was a letter saying, this is the payout figure plus one lease payment. So that's all I could get from St. George. And Westpac apparently can't calculate. They can't subtract this from that to get the, to get the payout figure. So after two months in September, the loan automatically closed, the loan application automatically closed. So finally I got the letter from Westpac, from St. George saying what the payout figure was on the 10th of October. So I put in a new application and then more than two weeks later, so they had two weeks for it. Two weeks later on the 27th of October, they ring me and said, oh, the letter's out of date. It's like, yes, you were supposed to pay it on the 25th of October. What have you done for two weeks? So anyway, they said, oh, yeah, by the way, yeah, the rego's good, everything's good. So we just need a new payout letter from, from St. George. So I rang them. God, God knows like, how what penalties and everything. But luckily, they just, same payout figure, 25th of November. So I submitted it to Westpac. So this is like the third month this has been going on, this loan application. Westpac that I've been banking with for, you know, two decades. My salary's been going in every month, right? They keep, and, and they keep getting automated SMS. You haven't confirmed your salary with us. I've done it five times. Anyway, so I get a call from Westpac today. said, yeah, thanks, we've got the letter now, but your car isn't registered. So like, what the fuck are you talking about? Yes, my car is registered. Here's the receipt. Here's the rego check on the New South Wales government website. Yes, but our third-party credit provider says your car isn't registered. So now apparently I have to chase some third-party credit provider, uh, credit report provider, to correct some information. I have no dealing with these people. It's like, seriously, Westpac, what the... So I'm a bit fucking annoyed. It's like, it's, if it was just one thing, if it was just one thing... Then it's like, okay, but it's been one thing after another with Westpac. And it's like three months to sort this out. And it's still, the, the payout figure is less than a third of what the car's valued at as well. You know, it's not like I'm asking, <laughs> it's like a third of what the car's valued at. <laughs> oh, and it's like, you can't, you can't just ring them back. You ring them back, you're in, on the queue for 40 minutes. So, uh, I don't know. Anyway, I'm very fed up. Okay, so, sorry. Okay, four minutes. Okay. So, as, as you probably, if you don't know, you can press L. That skips ahead 30 seconds. So, I'm really quite annoyed at the moment. Anyway, so, I was thinking, I've got these... <laughs> my car's not registered. It's like, what the fuck are you talking about? You know, the government says my car is registered. What, I don't care what the, some third party company says. What, what, what has that got to do with. Anyway. So, um, yeah, I've got these uh, RGBS cables uh, for the GBS 8200. So I thought, well, first thing I could do quick thing to test is to just get the solder um, desoldering iron and suck out these bits of um, solder here and basically tack on tack on the cable and just plug it in and, and see what happens um, then it'll be actually yeah um, desoldering desoldering these and um, this and 
trying the uh, RGBS mod. That um, was it, Billy Forty Eight? Is it Billy Forty Eight? He's got a really good website for for this machine. Anyway, so I'm going to do that now. Oh, don't rub it. The sensitive CMOS ULA, Brett. Don't rub it. Um, I'm going to suck out the relevant relevant um, holes and then um, tack this on and see what happens. Okay, rant over. Right, nice and calm now. So I've tacked, I've tacked the RGBS and ground cables on. Um, as per the schematic, I've got them connected up to a GBS 8200. I will connect in the power supply and see if we get something. Something would be better than nothing. Uh, other way around. Okay, that's in there. Right, let me get set up a bit. Okay, here we go. Turn the power on. Hey, it's working. There we go. How's that? Okay, it's not focusing too well, is it? Um, oh yeah, this is right. This is, um, it's a four by three, is it? No, no, it's a square. This one's got a square, um, square output, square output. Um, not the normal four by four by three. Yeah. <laughs> okay. It's, um, working. So that is just basically taking the straight, taking the, um, Taking the RGB signal straight from the ULA, really. Whoop, whoop. <laughs> click, 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 click. Yeah, so that's just taking the output straight from the ULA. Um, I messed up a bit there. I tried to... Whoop. There. Uh, whoop. Just touching something. Uh, no, it's working. So... I messed up with the blue signal. That's the first one I did. I tried to use the solder uh, desoldering iron to suck it out, but it um, the little pad came off because it's a via. And so I was trying to get the pin to go back to the via, and it just wasn't taking. So I've had to I've had to tack that there. But um, everything else I've tacked to where the signal next goes to, um, as per the schematics. So we've got. Basically, so we would have RGB here, and then we've got sync on here, and then I've just taken ground on there. So, um, I think this might be a quick video because this is quite, quite inspiring. Apart from my rant at the start, which, okay. <laughs> so the rant probably takes up most of the video. Um, all right, so there we go. So that'll be the plan. So the next thing will be basically getting Desoldering, desoldering these and this, so I can get the board out, and then putting in a, um, a, a DIN socket on here, um, and putting it back in. I'm wondering how I'm gonna. What's the easiest way to do these ones? I'm thinking. I'll sort that out, and then maybe I don't know because we've got these edge connectors here for the joysticks. Maybe putting in a DIN socket here. I don't know if it'll fit. Didn't socket here for the joystick. Or I could put in a DE9 Atari. Okay. Um, well, it's, yeah, I hope, apart from the rant at the start, I hope this is kind of encouraging. And then the next one, I'll be, well, I'll start that tonight. But it's going to take me a while. So stay tuned.